is movie over yet? No. It's still going. All right. Hey guys, this is my review of Red Sparrow. Now, honestly, I... I actually kind of didn't want to see this movie, but it was a Tuesday and I wanted something to do, so I went and saw it. A lot of people were thinking that this movie was going to be salt, and it's not. It is not salt at all, because this movie is about basically, it is about spies, but it's about spies who, in a sense, are sexual sirens, in the sense that they will seduce, they will manipulate, they will mislead, they will mistrust, they will deceive their targets, all the while reporting whatever that they learn from their targets through whatever means possible of getting to that information. The movie is about Jennifer Lawrence's character, who is a ballerina who is injured and has to try and take care of her mother. So by doing so, the only way that that is possible is going into this program through her manipulative uncle's ways. And what is happening on the side with Joel Edgerton is that he has a informant within the Russian High Command, and he has this mole. And inadvertently, Jennifer Lawrence is tasked with meeting with and manipulating Joel Edgerton to find out who the mole is. And there's few things that this movie does pretty well, I'll admit. Jennifer Lawrence is probably, guys, actually pretty good in this movie, considering the amount of adult and very awkward subject matter that happens. For instance, there's this scene where she is essentially told to have sex with this guy in front of everyone, and what she does is she turns it around on them. She takes the power away from the guy who's supposed to be with her and she turns it back on him all the while apparently appearing to lower all the defenses by taking off all of her clothes but in the end she has regained power in the situation and it's very very interesting when you watch chris stuckman's review i remember him saying there was a lot of awkward scenes one of them with mary louise parker in it who is in it but I don't know whether he kind of pacified the whole thing for me, but I only found two scenes somewhat awkward. But otherwise, they were more intriguing than awkward. And the reason why I say intriguing is because this movie's slow. It's two hours and 20 minutes long, and it does not need to be. It's not as slow as Atomic Blonde was, but it is slow. And I will give the editor credit, you can tell he is trying his damnedest to cram this movie together, but in a coherent way. For instance, I, I bet you this movie almost had a running time of three hours. Because this guy is tr cutting these transitions together like boom, 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 boom. Oh, I can have a voiceover carry on the scene, boom. Oh, I can have like dialogue and action being ca carried over from two different scenes overlapping each other, boom, I'll do it. He tried to make this movie compelling. And he's probably one of the best parts of this movie. The editor is literally trying his damnedest to keep you entertained. And it works to an extent that the movie just has a lot of lulls. And there's a part in the very middle where this plan turns into the main plot point of the story. But it's so quickly rushed over. That's the one thing I'll give it to him is he does this part too fast. And it's none of it's dialogue. It's all just things that Jennifer Lawrence is reading. But you don't know what she's reading. You don't know what she's looking into because... It's going over so fast. And then it becomes the main plot point of the story. And that's the first, like, mm. all right. Otherwise, Joel Edgerton is, he's in it. Jeremy Irons, he's in it. You know you're supposed to care about the mother, but the fact that she has such a little screen time, it's just like, oh, remember that Jennifer Lawrence's mother is sick? Here, here, reminding you that she's sick. Oh, we, but we don't have time to develop her. We're just going to remind you that she's sick. And same for the uncle, it's like, oh, you know, he's bad, right? You know, he, he has some weird things. Oh, oh, oh but we're going to go, we're going to just go back to this part. And that's how the movie feels. Like every time you're actually 
focused on something that you might be interested in, it remembers that it has to speed the fuck up because this is a really long ass story. And I will admit that the ending was definitely not what I expected in its sense. It does pull a few twists and turns, but the problem was it took so goddamn long to get to this point that you're just there going, okay, I'm just waiting for this movie to end. Red Sparrow isn't really a bad movie, but it's not an enjoyable one in the sense of just thematic wise. It really drags out its presence. You, there's so much thrown at you that you don't remember much. Like I just saw it last night and I don't remember much of what I saw other than some of the awkward scenes and it's just not that mm, woo of a movie. It's an interesting subject matter. I enjoyed that they went into the subject matter, but in terms of a memorable experience, it's definitely not going to leave me with much of anything other than the fact that Jennifer Lawrence does some pretty risque stuff in this film. Anyways, my final rating for Red Sparrow is a 3 out of 7. I don't know, I thought it was alright. I would never see it again though. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you like this video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, hit subscribe. Anyways guys, that's all from me. See you guys next time.